Hello and welcome to Coders Column. My name is Sunny Solanki, and in today's video, I will explain how to create waterfall charts using Python data visualization library Matplotlib. The waterfall charts are commonly used to understand how an initial value, for example, net revenue, is affected by a series of positive or negative values. The most common use cases of waterfall charts are inventory analysis, performance analysis, and financial analysis. Now, if you follow along with me, then we will end up creating charts that look like this. So without further ado, let's jump to my screen and get started with coding. Right, so here we are on my screen. As you can see on my screen, I already have a Jupyter Notebook open and we'll be creating chart in Jupyter Notebook. So let's move on. So first of all, I have imported a library matplotlib and printed the current version, which is installed on my system. So current version is 3.5.3 .3 on my system. So this is the latest and most stable version. Now let's go ahead and load our data set. So over here, I have created a sample data set that we'll be using for our purpose, for our first example. So the data set I have loaded as a pandas data frame df. And the data set has uh, various labels like sales, consulting, net revenue, purchases, expenses, and profit. So the values which are pop, uh, positive, so it can be earnings or revenues. So that will be shown as positive. And whenever we want to see the cumulative values of all the previous values, then we will set the values as zero. So that's net revenue because we want to see like all the cumulative values of all previous values. And then whenever we are and we have any expenses that will be represented with uh, negative values because we are spending money on those values and so on. So let's move on. So we'll be creating our first waterfall chart using this data set. So let's move on. So over here in this cell, I have included a logic to calculate cumulative value of this uh, expenses and revenues over here and then i have made a minor modification to cumulative values where the values are less than zero so for these cases whenever values are less than zero i have modified the cumulative values by adding the original value again to them so i have again added 40000 to this uh, 100000 over here so there is a reason behind adding this logic because we are going to use this modified cumulative value for our future calculations as well as for displaying annotations and then i have also included a column name color so there is a simple logic so whenever value is zero so that will be like a calculation of all previous values so that i have set dodger blue color whenever the values are positive so that will be represented with green bars and whenever values are negative that will be represented with red bars so all right so this is the minus co minor code change so let's move on now over here uh, so let me execute this cell first and show you how our final data frame looks so as you can see now our data frame has two more columns added bottom and height now these two columns i will be using when i create waterfall chart so waterfall chart is a kind of a bar chart and we need to specify where bar should start so the bottom will be specified so bottom is the y-axis value from where the bar will start and the height is the height of that bar from that bottom position so we'll be using these two values to create various bars of our waterfall chart so the logic over here is that so it calculates this bottom and height values based on this values and cumulative values or original values of sales consulting and so on and cumulative value so if you want to follow along with me then i would suggest that you copy this logic so this logic changes the current value and previous values and based on that it decides what should be the uh, value of bottom and height so yeah let's go ahead and create our first waterfall chart so in order to do our first waterfall chart first of all i will import matplotlib dot pyplot api as we'll be creating chart using pyplot api first of all i will create a figure object so let's set figure size to 
12 by 7 and set to figure and now we can create a bars of our waterfall chart so let's do that that i will do it by calling bar method now the first parameter to bar method is uh, x values which i will simply give index values of our data frame so index values are nothing but uh, integers from 0 to 5 so for 0 to 5 we will have 6 bars now height will be so height will be df of df of height so we already calculated height over there so we will be using that df of height bottom will be bottom parameter is used to specify from where the bar should start so that also we have calculated so i will call it bottom and then i will specify color parameter so df of color so yeah i think that's it so we have our first bar our first waterfall chart so let me execute it so we'll be creating bar chart in an incremental fashion i will first create a simple bar chart and then will keep on adding things to improve the look of the chart. So let me exhibit this cell and show you the result. So yeah, as you can see, now our bar chart is ready. So now what I will do, I will add uh, tick labels, axis labels and chart title. So let's go ahead and do that. So plt.xtx will be df.index will be the ticks and df of this column labels will be labels for x axis plt dot y x so the values are going from 0 to 140,000 so what i will do let me include a simple logic which goes from 0 to 160,000 1 i want to and then increase the values by 20,000 each time Okay, so we will have 0, 20,000, 40,000 and so on values and so these are ticks and the labels for the ticks will be for let's say well in this range let's use formatting well let's add x label which can be let's say earnings or revenues slash purchases plt dot y label will be cost or whatever you want to say for that in plt dot title let's give a simple title water chart so let me execute this cell and show you how now our chart looks so yeah now as you can see now on x-axis we have tick labels we have the axis label for y-axis let's add dollars over here so show that the values are in dollars so 0 to 20 40 and there is a formatting as well and there is a chart title so now i will modify the font of our chart a little bit so there is a parameter name so first of all i will set location to left so that my title is starts from left let me add padding of around 10 pixels and then there is a parameter name font date which i can set to dictionary and over there i will say font size i will set it for font size for title let's say 50 or oh, 20 sorry no 50 and then font weight parameter i will set to string bold to make our titles little bit bold so that's for title let's modify those parameters for our x and y axis labels as well so i have modified them to font size of 16 and what i will do i will modify the size of ticks as well ticks i will use 14 on uh, the font size of 14 
and we write so let's modify that as well 14 and all right now let me execute this and show you how our chart looks all right now this one looks uh, quite better okay so as you can see here uh, we have our chart ready but let's go ahead and add the values on the top of each of the bars so currently i can see over here it's this green bar is going till 60000 and then we, but let's add those ticks as well so as a string text so we can properly understand like what is the values so in order to do this i need to go through loop for i in range so length of df so number of entries so number of bars we for each bar we will have uh, one text so plt dot text for x axis we will use df dot index index of so over here let's use uh, variable name as index so this is index y axis df of cumulative so cumulative is the height where we want to display our text and text will be df so over here i forgot to include indexing option and then for this we have wells so we want to display these values so that's it let's say index and i think we will have our labels now if we execute this set sorry there is a parameter name as not text over here so yeah i think we have our values ready but let's modify them a little bit so what i will do here is that i will again use formatting on dollar dot format let's see put it inside of that let me move it on the next line okay and then what i will do horizontal alignment i need to set to center using ha parameter and vertical alignment bottom so let me execute this one and show you how it looks now so yeah now we have labels properly written they are on they are in center so let me modify on size as well let's use 16 yeah now we can properly see like what is the values now the only uh, thing is that i can properly see the values of when we have positive values or negative values but i don't see the values for cumulative whenever we have net revenue and profit there is a zero over there so the i can take those values from cumulative column so what i will do is that i will add a simple if condition over here where i am specifying string i will say that if current value is not equal to zero and take it from wells column and if it is equal to zero and take values for cumulative columns right so let that say it i think now we should have our sorry i need to specify else over here if it is not equal to zero right and now we have 60,000, 80,000, and minus 40,000, minus 30,000 will be 70,000 dollar so there you go here we have our final waterfall chart ready our first waterfall chart now if you want to add let's say i have noticed that some waterfall charts adds a line connecting this bar so if you want to add that line what you can do there is a method named step and in this method you can specify first is x values second is y values which i will set to df of cumulative so let me execute this and show you the result okay so now we have line but let me align this line properly 
I will set where there is a parameter name where which I can specify to mid so it starts from the mid of the bar. Then let me set color to black. Right now, as you can see, we have a line going through bars connecting. So it's an optional step. If you want to add this line, you can add this line. Otherwise, you can just keep it this way. Now this chart looks a uh, little basic. So let's add theme to this chart. So you can call a method name use. And over here you can specify various themes which you can apply to your chart. So there are various themes available for like C Bond, GG Plot 2, 538, and some dark themes and so many themes are available. So I will be using 538 theme. So this theme is uh, based on a famous uh, blog named 538.com and they have some specific theme for the chart that we will apply to our chart. So once I execute this cell, all the charts that I will create after this cell will be using that theme. And if you want to learn more about uh, how to style charts using these themes, then I will include the link in the description as well as in the top right corner. So please feel free to check that link if you are interested in it. So I have executed this cell and set the theme as 538. So now what I will do if I copy this code now and execute it in the next cell. So let me execute it. And yeah, now as you can see, the total look of the chart is modified. It looks quite better. We have proper background. We have grades. And yes, that's it. So this is our first chart ready looks quite better with the theme set so let's go ahead and create one more waterfall chart now as you can see over here all the earnings are at the beginning so all the green bars at the beginning and all the red bars are over here but we might have situation we were have green and red chart interleaving one another so I have created one more data set over here where we have that situation. So in this data set, I have Q1, Q2, Q4, then total, then again Q1. So consider this as a like two year data of some company. So values are over here for Q or earnings are like 60,000, then 80,000. Then there is a loss of 14,000. Then there is a 30,000 profit and so on. So now we have positive and negative values, you know, with one another here. So if I want to check, I wanted, I did this specifically to check whether my logic is working or not to calculate the bottom and height values, which we specified earlier. So let's go ahead. So this is the same logic which why which, that I had used when calculating the bottom and height of our first chart over here. So let me execute this. So now we have our data frame ready where we have labels, values, cumulative values, colors, bottoms and height. So now we can create our second bar chart using this data frame. So now in order to create a second bar chart, I will simply copy our previous code. So let me do that. And now in this code, so let me execute this and show you how it looks. Now as you can see, we have our second chart ready now i can see that there is a values little bit overriding one another so i will increase the width and ticks are going till ticks are going till one lakh sixty thousand only so let me modify ticks so i will go from uh, zero to let's say 220 to 20,000 increase the range by 20,000 each time then to again from 0 to 220,000 so let me if I over here figure size by 15 by 7 I will say 15 by 8 so I think chart will look better yeah now we have our second waterfall chart ready as you can see now this one looks quite better yeah so 
it's that easy to create a waterfall chart using this code once we have properly calculated bottom parameter and height parameter and these cumulative values so the main uh, the main thing behind uh, creating chart is this logic where we are creating calculating the bottom and height values and cumulative values over here so if you want to create uh, the waterfall chart using our code then you will have to follow this logic so there we have our second waterfall chart now i have noticed that uh, in this case the bars are laid out vertically but there can be a situation where bars are laid out uh, horizontally, horizontally as well so how can we do that so with minor modification to our code we can create a, we can create a waterfall chart we say, which has horizontal bars so let's go ahead and do that so i will increase the height of the figure a little bit because now we have a waterfall chart with horizontal bar so over here we need to use bar edge method instead of bar over here we need to use y instead of height now we will be specifying width of uh, our bars and it will start from left side we will be specifying left color will be as it is now on y axis we will have label on x axis we will have the values in dollars over here as well i will need to interchange x and y and we need so earnings and purchases will go on y axis and cost will go on x axis so let me execute this one so we modify from bar to bar edge and we interchange x and y axis x and labels and also text for x and y axis annotation so let me execute this and show you how it looks so yeah now we have our waterfall chart ready and as you can see it's a it's a waterfall chart with horizontal bars so let me make some minor changes to properly align these uh, annotations so i will say vertical announce uh, alignment to center so it is in center and horizontal alignment to right so let me execute this and yeah now this one looks quite better as you can see now as you can see the values are starting from bottom from q1 q2 q3 q4 total and so on but there can be situation where you want this uh, value to start from top so you want it start from here from q1 q2 and so on so you can do that by making a minor change to our existing code so what i will do over here that i will simply reverse all the values so i will reverse the list of values all of them and then we will have a waterfall chart where we have a actual value starting from top instead of bottom so let's do that in order to reverse the any list uh, we have this uh, indexing option where you specify colon colon minus one it will start from uh, from the right end and it will reverse the list over here i will say colon colon minus one for majority of the value colon colon minus one for x x it will be colon colon minus one index will be over here it will be values of colon colon minus one colon colon minus one minus one and i think that should do so let me execute this cell and check whether there is any error or this code is working fine all right so i think we have done it and the code is working just fine so as you can see now q1 is starting at the top q1 q2 q3 q4 and then total and again q1 q2 q3 q4 total so in this horizontal waterfall chart the q1 was starting at the bottom and then was going up if you want it to start from top q1 q2 q3 q4, then 
yeah then you just need to reverse the labels and the total logic so yeah that's it so that's it for this video if you liked our video and if you learned something new today then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you are looking to learn more about python and you want to see more such python videos so yeah that's it for today see you next time